Hello X Academy. In this quick tip, uh, we're going to talk about mounting models or using the virtual articulator when we don't have a full arch uh, at scan as we do in this case. Uh, what I mean is normally for a single unit, um, typically doctors may be sending uh, quad trays for impressions that we're going to scan or maybe they're only scanning a quadrant they're not scanning the whole arch so my first point is if you have a scanner why aren't you simply scanning the whole arch or at least um, a canine on the, the contralateral uh, side so that you know where your midline is so you can get somewhat of a better approximation of the uh, orientation of how to uh, articulate the models. So what I mean um, to, to solve this problem or how would you mount a quad without having the full arch scan, uh, we're going to start the virtual articulator so I can show you what I mean. So here in the virtual articulator uh, we already have the re-articulate models virtually window open or the articulator jaw correction window open and uh, since I believe the 2.2 release Valletta the automatic virtual articulation um, is very good the algorithm is very good so when we click automatically if we have a full arch here um, I'm going to set the incisal point and I'm just going to click on um, you can see the upper and lower arch get highlighted when I hover over them. Um, I try and go to the upper arch, uh, the midline there, and then you can see here it says point on left molar, and so I try and find the common molar. So if a patient doesn't have first molars and they only have second molar occlusion, I'll click on the second molar. Um, but here we have the first molar mesiobuccal cusp. Um, and you can see it's on the uh, lower molar and now we've moved to the right molar so point on the right molar and this patient we're actually designing um, a crown on number three so we don't have the mesial buccal cusp of number three um, so I'm going to go to the lower molar here and click on that you can the mesial buccal cusp uh, you can see that green point there for number three so we have number of points, we have three points selected, and we click Perform Alignment. When we zoom out, and I will turn on the Show Vertical Plane here, you can see that it that vertical plane is right between 8 and 9. And from the occlusal aspect, you can see that our arch is um, balanced, kind of even on both sides. So um, that's a great uh, placement, okay? And it's done automatically, so that's a great alignment. Um, I'm just going to click OK, and that's going to set those scans. And now I can perform. I can perform the articulator movement simulation. And it's going to go with that alignment based on the full arch, automatically selecting those three points. Problem arises when we don't have three points. When we don't have um, any scan data. Uh, on the contralateral side uh, when we don't cross the midline. So even if you just got canine to canine, um, let's say we're doing number three and we only had the jaw scan up to number 12 or number 11, that would be enough because then I could at least define my midline, um, the incisal point, and a point on the right and left sides for the patient. So that would, that would mount the case. Um, but when we only got a quad, we don't have that option. Okay, so that's where the problem comes in. Uh, so I'm just going to click OK here, and I am going to edit our meshes. So what I'm going to do now is 
um, select straight through and typically what we would get if we are doing a first molar um, you might only get up to the canine so let's delete that so this might be all of the scan data that you get for a single molar so now let's start our articulator And we're going to re-articulate the models virtually. So I'm just going to assume that they are in a bad place. Okay, they weren't uh, articulated previously with our three points, so we don't know where to put them. What I do in this case is I can't use automatic. I can't use automatic alignment because I don't have a left molar. I don't have anything that's crossing the midline. And this is why it's so important that we get that um, that we get that midline in there at least very minimum and then hopefully um, uh, the canine on the contralateral side and optimally we want um, first molars uh, on both sides so we can really get a full articulation. But this is what our lab technicians are going to complain to us about is that we don't how are they supposed to mount the models uh, the right way if you're only giving them parsh, partial records so what I do is I turn on the articulator I turn on the occlusion occlusion plane which is on by default I believe and I also show the vertical plane okay this is going to be our midline when I am manually uh, articulating these, first I will just get it in the ballpark. I want to get our plane of occlusion correct. And just like anything else, I'm trying to orient these in three planes. Now I am basically looking uh, head on. I need to move this these jaw scans to the left, but I don't want to alter the vertical uh, height or the in the occlusion, the occlusal direction. So now I'm clicking move in XY plane. This will lock my vertical position. So I can only move it left and right from this uh, orientation. Even though I'm moving the cursor up and down, it's not changing the occlusal position. So I'm moving this just left and right from this aspect. Now I'm going to look from the vertical aspect as if I'm looking straight down the articulator. I'll turn the articulator off and now I can go uh, forwards and backwards. So I really just want this section, this quadrant, to be in the bounds of this pink triangle of the occlusion plane. So I'm looking at it from direct facial and direct occlusal while I've got this move in XY plane checked. If I don't like my plane of occlusion here, so if I don't like this pink plane, um, you can see right here I want to basically tilt this down uh, forward, like tipping, uh, tipping the patient's chin down. Um, or up, I can rotate, I can lock those rotations. Uh, so for this, um, I want to rotate around the transverse axis, and that will essentially tip the patient's chin down. Or sagittal, which, is, which would be tipping the patient's head kind of side to side. So I do those in order to get my plane of occlusion how I would like. And then I move in the Z direction only where I want that correct height.
So you can see uh, how our technicians are going to have a much more difficult time mounting, uh, getting a correct mounting, when all they have is a partial arch. So that's how I do uh, a partial mounting. And now, uh, let's say we will accept that position. Now I can run through the articulator simulation. So that's how I mount a partial arch or mount a quad. Um, I basically just try and get it in the pink triangle uh, at the end of the day. That's what we're talking about. Now another problem that we have, um, which I will need to show you, I will need to alter it right here live. So another problem that we have is aberrant scan data. Typically this will happen um, around um, the the, um, the uh, buccal soft tissue or cheek tissue, um, that if we capture that data and we don't properly edit it and remove it, that will influence our, our articulator movements. So what I mean is typically, um, if you can see we have this extra soft tissue um, buckle to the uh, third molar in this case, but sometimes this, this buckle soft tissue will be on top of our first molars even, or second molars, and that will influence our articulator movements. Any extra data that we have on the teeth will influence the articulator movements. So I'm gonna show you something here. Uh, so let's freeform the scan data. And I'm going to turn off our jaw scan. So what I mean by that is let's say we had some extra data on this premolar right here. And I'm going to add some extra data here by freeforming. Clearly that would be an interference. But if we didn't remove it, if that interference persisted, we're going to go back to our articulator. And you can see that this data has now opened the articulator such that now our crown is out of occlusion. But it also influences our jaw movements. So you can see that these premolars now, the program is thinking that this extra data is actually tooth. And so when it goes into excursions to calculate the articulator movements, it's going to calculate this extra data as a cusp tip and will move your jaw accordingly. So really, ExoCAD will think that your jaw, your upper jaw is out of the way uh, when really it is going to be uh, interfering. It's going to be colliding with the lower jaw because it's actually not tooth in the lower jaw, it's just extra data. So you have to make sure that before you run your articulator that you run your 3D data editor. We're going to edit meshes. We, we run our 3D data editor So that any extra data that we have, and it's not going to be this thick, it's going to be a little spike of data, that we actually select that data, delete it, and then we close that STL. So now we have that, that aberrant data is removed, and this would be a good jaw scan. Now clearly, um, we this is uh, much extra bigger wider area that we would normally then when we would what we would normally get typically if we have just a little blip or blob of data it will be attached by a thin stalk we simply just remove that extra area like right here and in our 3d data editor the way that I do this is I separate those scans so they are not continuous I select all of our upper and our lower jaw and then 
you can see that extra data isn't connected right here and I will crop. So now all that extra floaty stuff is gone. If I have all of this extra, like this cheek tissue that's here that we captured and we only want the bottom of the vestibule, what I will do is select kind of the bottom of a, you can see our mucogingival junction there and I will just remove a strip of data in between so I want to I want to keep all of this data on the right remove all the data that's on the left so I create a strip of data in between delete it and then select by click on surface select my lower jaw and upper jaw and crop and that removes all of the extra data that's not that's on the other side of that strip so now you can see I've just kept everything in between so that kind of uh, solves a couple problems for you um, but really if you are getting regular quadrant scans um, I would ask your dentist um, if you aren't the dentist uh, de de uh, designing these um, that we get full arch scans if po when possible. So I hope that helps uh, answer some of your questions about uh, mounting quadrants, uh, but much easier to mount, uh, much easier, uh, and you'll get a better full contour design with a full arch scan. Thanks so much for watching.